Hey guys, how's it going? Yuri here. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you're ready for a uh, an awesome week leading up to Christmas. And because it's you know this time of year where we look at tend to reflect looking back on this year and look at what went right, what went wrong, what can we learn from our mistakes. Hopefully we're doing that, right? So um, I want to gear you up this week to help you get ready for 2012 to make it your best year ever. And I'm also gonna pop in uh, closer to Christmas itself to give you some specific diet and nutrition tips to help you prevent falling asleep at the table from all that food. It's gonna be fun, but you know, I'm gonna give you some important tips, so stay tuned. So every, every day this week, I'm gonna give you a new video and we're gonna go to a couple different things. We're gonna start off today with uh, what I think is really, really important. I came across this a little while ago and it was uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the governator, yes. His six tips or six rules for a successful life. Now, funny story, before I get into these, I have, uh, I have a friend of mine who used, to call me, who used to call me urinator. So like obviously not like that, not that I used to urinate, but you know, yuri and then uh, the nader part because I, I used to do this, uh, I guess I was well known for doing these Arnold impressions. So he used to call me the urinator. So, um, so I have this connection to Arnold's, not because I talk like Arnold, but because he's an awesome guy, you know, that kind of stuff. Anyways, um, you know, whatever your opinions are of Arnold Schwarzenegger, what I'm gonna share with you today is very valuable. And I can't, I mean, we can't deny the fact that Arnold's is an amazing example of accomplishment and confidence and achieving your dreams. So I wanna share six of his rules that have allowed him to achieve this degree of success. And I think that they can apply to really anyone. I mean, if you look at this list, you'll be able to say, okay, yes, I'm doing this, or no, I'm not doing this, or this applies to me, or this doesn't apply to me. So grab a pen and paper, write these down if you want, uh, and really start living your life by these rules, because they'll make a huge difference. The first one is ask yourself, who do you want to be? Okay, um, you know like when we were young, our parents or somebody else used to ask us, what do you wanna be when you grow older? I wanna be a fireman, an astronaut, professional soccer player. But they don't really ask us who we want to be when we grow older. And I think that's a really important question, and so obviously to Darnold, is, is asking yourself, who do I wanna be? Who, what type of person do I want to become? And even if you're 40 years old or 70, Remember, it's never too late to change. You can always, always be asking yourself, who do I wanna become? Who do I need to become to be living the life that I wanna live? And I think it's a very important question because you start to, one of the biggest reasons that people sabotage themselves is because of this incongruency of identity. So for instance, if you start making all these healthy changes in your life and all of a sudden your identity subconsciously is not in line with those habits or those new changes, you will eventually sabotage yourself. So asking yourself, what type of person, who do I need to become, or who do I need to be, who do I wanna be, to be totally fulfilled and happy? That's a very, very important question. And I think if you really sit down and introspect, you'll probably get some really interesting answers. And from that, it'll help you make some better decisions. So, that's the first one. The second one, that's more of a question, I guess. Uh, the second one is to not be afraid of failing. Okay, so don't be afraid to fail. So many people, and I've worked with clients in the past. I actually worked with, um, well, I'm gonna give you an example of a specific client I had in the past. Uh, really nice lady. We worked out for several years together. She, but for whatever reason, she always got to the point in our workouts where she would stop just before the end. It's almost as if she was kind of pulling back because she, she was almost apprehensive or scared of not being able to complete the, f the whole workout or the, the entire set. That's just a, you know, that's a microcosm example. But don't be afraid to fail. The only way we can achieve greatness is by stretching our limits and maybe we'll fail. Now that's fine because that's, where, you know, that's how we learn, but that's also where the breakthroughs come. So don't be afraid, uh, don't be afraid to fail uh, because on the other side of that, if, you know, if we're looking at failure, if you want to call that, as this uh, dividing line between staying where you are and getting to the next stage of where you want to be. Failure is that line we kind of have to cross sometimes. And if we don't take the risks, again, it doesn't have to be financial risks or, you know, risks that are going to put our body in danger, but sometimes, you know, it's okay to push the envelope. And if you fail, that's okay, because that's how we learn. And then we correct course, and then we go back, right? It's like, um, let me think of an example here. Um, 
you know, like an airplane. Like if you're flying an airplane, there's a certain amount of wind resistance. And if you have a, a crosswind, the airplane, instead of going in a straight direction, will be veering off you know, on a diagonal. So what do the, the pilots or the autopilot system do is they correct, right? So they get pushed to the side, they correct. They push to the side, they correct, and then just keep on going like that. So it's the same thing in any area of life is, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Things are going to happen. Learn from it and just move on. The third rule is to not listen to naysayers, right? And this is probably one of the biggest things, and I talk about this a lot, is surrounding yourself with the right type of people. Your environment is so important because the nature of people, not all people, not, not you, but other people, is that if they see you succeeding, they're gonna to wanna to pull you down. And there's a great example of uh, one of my business coaches, Bedros Cooley, and he used this example called, um, well, it's actually, it was a real life example. He was on a cruise in, uh, in Alaska, and he was on the ship and noticed that there was this fisherman with a, a bucket of crabs. And so the crabs were sitting in this bucket. All of a sudden, one crab started to crawl out of the bucket. So Bedros told the fisherman, he's like, uh, sir, you know, one of your crabs is getting out. And the fisherman replied, don't worry, watch, watch, watch what's gonna happen here. So as the crab started to crawl out, what happened? All the other crabs at the bottom of the bucket reached up and pulled them down. How true is, how true is that in, in everyday life? Okay? So you wanna eliminate the crabs out of your life and do not listen to the naysayers. All they're saying, if they say, no, you can't do this, is that, no, I can't do this. Okay? So don't listen to them. You always have to tell yourself that you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Because at the end of the day, the real, the only obstacle we'll ever face is up here. Okay, so you have to really reinforce your mind with positive thoughts and belief that you can do anything that you want. Okay? Now the fourth thing is to work your butt off. Very simple. Muhammad Ali once, uh, once was asked uh, by a reporter, how many sit-ups do you do? Or how like, you know, in a given workout. And Muhammad Ali re responded something to the, to the effect of this. He's like, I don't count my sit-ups. I only start counting when they start hurting. And that's really, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali was just, you know, a, a lot of great quotes like that. You know, he would often say that uh, success is determined, or success is, um, is won, or, or the battle is won when no one else is looking, right? So he, you know, just kind of uh, highlighting the fact that he'd work harder when other people were not, were, were, not, were, not, were not watching, he didn't care about all that, you know, what, what you know, he's doing a lot of stuff in the gym while other people are sleeping, that kind of stuff. Anyways. The essential thing is you need to work your butt off, okay? You, if you can't, if you don't put in the work, you're not gonna get any results. This is very, very simple. Uh, it's, it's really as simple as that. Um, you know, so you can have all the, the tools, all the strategies, all the, the, the knowledge, but again, if you don't put it into practice, if you don't take action, if you don't work out, if you don't eat well, it doesn't matter, okay? You have to work hard, and that's, that's really what separates the most successful people in all areas of, of life versus those who don't really achieve their full potential. And everyone has potential to, to achieve incredible greatness. Uh, it doesn't matter if, you know, whatever, you know, whoever you are, wherever you live, everyone has this potential to, to, to really, uh, to achieve incredible, incredible greatness. Um, so you have to work yourself. You have to work to achieve that though. It's not gonna be innately born into you. And um, there we go. The fifth one, is to give back, right? The sense of contribution. And this is very, very important. You know, if you look at a lot of the longest living cultures uh, around the world, like these blue zones, you know, one of the biggest things is their sense of community, okay? It's not just that they're eating better, but it's also this sense of uh, social community that's really important to them. And, you know, they do things within these communities to give back. And it can be something as simple as, you know, taking care of their grandkids or, you know, you know contributing to, uh, I don't know, tri tribal traditions, uh, giving back can take many, many different forms. And it doesn't have to be financial all the time, right? It could be helping somebody cross the road. You know, we see, I mean, I, I, was, I go to the gym in the mornings and on my way to the gym, there's you know, these crossing guards and they just stand out there all day. And what they do is they just help kids cross the road. And I've always wondered, I'm like, you know, wow, that's, uh, that's not an easy job to do, but you really have to love it and have a sense of contribution that what you're doing is making a difference in other people's lives. Okay, so our final rule, according to the governor, Arnold, is to break the rules, think outside the box. And I think Arnold was a great example of this because he never, again, he just, you know, he's a guy, a kid from Austria who always had the dream of coming over to America and achieving his dreams. 
uh, he started off in bodybuilding, uh, became the, the most confident, arrogant bodybuilder that we've, we've probably ever seen. I think he won six Mr. Universes, something like that, just crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, at that time, he decided he was going to become a Hollywood star. This is, you know, when he's in his early 20s. And then from there, he goes on to politics, right? I mean, if he was, if he was born in the States, he probably would have become president. Who knows? Now, what I want to suggest to you guys is if you have not seen his movie, Pumping Iron, uh, I'd highly recommend watching this because, you know, it's not about... Again, it's not about necessarily about bodybuilding or, well, I mean, if you're into bodybuilding, it's a really cool movie as well, but more, more interestingly is that you'll get to see the type of person he is and the type of psychology that he has that's allowed him to achieve the success that he's achieved. So again, the, the movie is called Pumping Iron. It's one of the best movies that I've seen. It's one of the most eye-opening and inspiring movies. And whether, again, whether or not you like Arnold's, it doesn't matter. Just put aside, you know, whatever it is, 70 minutes or 75 minutes. This is an awesome movie. And because it's holiday season, you know, take a bit of time, look back, look forward as well, and, uh, and start pumping yourself up with this kind of stuff. It's really, really empowering, really inspiring. And again, if a little, you know, if a kid from Austria can come across the world and dominate bodybuilding, become a Hollywood star, and then become... <laughs> A prominent political figure in the, the you know the most uh, popular or successful country in the world. Just imagine what you can do. Okay, so all you have to do is remember that these six rules. Well, not all you have to do, but start applying some of these rules into your life and and see if um, you know see if you might be lacking in one or two areas and seeing if you can fortify those. So there we go. That's today's video. Tomorrow I'm going to be back with uh, I'm going to share another really cool strategy that I personally use that has helped me to achieve a lot of my goals. And I'm going to share this with you tomorrow. So stay tuned. Again, if you've got any questions, just let me know or comments below. You know, let me know what you think. And we'll see you tomorrow.